winds coming from the northwest at 5 to 10 miles an hour. For the five state forecast, I'm Marky e. Bilson. At 706, it's currently 30 degrees. The five state big talker, KGYN. Got to get a theme song, right? You know, the weather in bed is critical. I could do that. I mentioned, hey, it's Marky e. Bilson. Welcome to the five state sunrise here and excited about today's show. We have two guests on today. So I'm trying to build uh, you know, the show here, but I'm really proud of this. One is a man that has been a part of every, I, I would say, uh, Republican presidency and helping them get elected since 1972 and Richard Nixon. And that would be Roger Stone, who will join me. I, today we're going to have a debate. It's going to be on Sean Hannity. Of course, you can hear Sean Hannity here from 2 to 5 p.m. Uh, every weekday on the five-state big talker, KGYN, AM 1210. I think you probably And so what we have is uh, there a debate between Ron DeSantis and Gavin Newsom, who you might both say are running second uh, to be our next president. Although... Newsom really isn't running. And it seems like DeSantis is just there in case uh, he's playing Derek Cope to. Uh, Dale Earnhardt. All right. Now, there's a reference right there. He's playing Derek Cope to Dale to Dale Earnhardt. If you're an old NASCAR fan, you'll know what I'm talking about. 1990 Daytona 500. Earnhardt's got the race won. He's it's his first Daytona 500 victory. He's g- gonna get that monkey off his back. He's gonna go. He goes around the final turn and blows a tire. And here was Derek Cope running the race of his life and b- finishing second, and nobody knew who he was. Derek Cope once drove a Stock car sponsored by the rock group Poison, by the way. I kind of like Derek Cope. But anyway, Derek Cope is right. The tire goes out on uh, Earnhardt. He's there running a distant second. And Wait a minute here. And suddenly he wins the race. <laughs> and that's kind of, I think, the DeSantis strategy to the White House, hoping that something happens to Donald Trump, the legal difficulties or something. You know, I mean, he's, he's running the Derek Cope campaign. So we'll talk about that, but also the uh, story that came out this morning uh, that uh, Henry Kissinger had passed away uh, at the age of 100. Uh, certainly an influential figure in American history, certainly in American politics. I would say the most prominent secretary of state, certainly in my lifetime. I mean, you could argue Hillary Clinton. But I think Hillary Clinton was probably known more for being a senator or a first lady presidential candidate than being secretary of state. Alexander Haig thought so much of the office that he thought he could uh, usurp two, uh, what is it, two lines or what? No, it was actually, it would have been uh, three lines of secession, I think. He would have had to have uh, overcome the, uh, he would have had to have overcome George uh, 41 Bush, uh, Tip O'Neill, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who the president pro tempore was on uh, March 30th, 1981, but him as well uh, to take over the White House, which Haig attempted to do after the assassination attempt on Ronald Reagan uh, on that day. But still, you know, Okay, so that was one of the... He thought that much of the Secretary of State. That's one of the reasons why I don't think he lasted or that his own presidential campaign in 1988 didn't go so far. But, uh, yeah, Henry Kissinger passing away, and, of course, uh, Roger Stone got his start working with Richard Nixon, so we'll be asking uh, Mr. Stone in a few minutes about uh, Henry Kissinger as well. And, like I said, I try to get you the best guess and have the hardest hitting opinion. I mean, this is not, you know, I, I'm not too big on giving you celebrity birthdays. You know, I, I just think that's filler. 
you know, although occasionally, you know, say you've done that. But I'm talking about Woody Allen is 88. Ridley Scott is 86. Billy Idol is 68. That makes you think for a second there. How old is the, uh, I, I actually know this person. I'm trying to get the, what, Rebe- what was her name? I can't remember it now. Betsy Lynn George? Was that, I'm thinking of the young woman in the Cradle of Love video. Unforgettable, obviously. You know. So so is Kelly Cuoco. It's, am I pronouncing her name right? She's 38. Yeah, I can, that was a, that that was for uh, teenagers coming into age. Any male teenager co- coming into age around two thousand. Kaylee was, she was, you know, must check out. Uh, that was she was the uh, it girl around. So I could do things like that, but yeah, I mean, it's just filler. I'd rather get you some hard hitting stuff. Later on in the program, seven forty five, we'll be talking to Mike Shannon, the city manager of Guyman. He's in Norman. Why is he in Norman? We'll find that out and find out a little bit about, okay, what's, you know, going on in Guyman. I have a big Christmas celebration. Santa Claus comes to town tomorrow at 545. He'll be at City Hall coming in via helicopter. And that's something to take the boys and girls to. Tomorrow also I want to mention that will be having two members of the board from the Guyman Theater, uh, the American Theater, not the Guyman Theater, but the theater in Guyman. There's also a movie theater, as you know, but a, a multiplex, but the traditional one in downtown. Uh, they're going to be showing Christmas movies, beginning with this Sunday afternoon at 2.30. It's a wonderful life. And I look forward to debating the merits of Bedford Falls and Pottersville. Like I said, I would... I've always said I'd rather live in Pottersville. That's a town with action. (laughs) I don't really care what anybody else says about it. Yes, and all that. But I wanted to begin uh, and talk a little bit. Happy birthday, this day in history, that sort of thing. But it's something to talk about and how it is still relevant today. Happy 188th birthday to Mark Twain, or if you prefer Samuel Clemens. I'm just outside of Hannibal, Missouri, so you could say that uh, the region, if you will, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But recently in this times with Hamas and uh, Palestine and, uh, you know, attacking Israel and all this, we've been talking a lot, and I hate to say this, but like taking sides in Middle East uh, wars, for lack of a better term. Uh and it's really, yeah, the, some of the anti-Semitism has been disturbing. Let's face it, very disturbing. And yet, Mark Twain was a man who had traveled the world in the 19th century. He knew how to write about Huckleberry Finn, but he also knew how to write about, well, people. And on September 1897... Later quoted in the National Jewish Jewish Post and Observer, June 6, 1984, Mark Twain said this way back in 1897, and I just want to say it in response to some of the anti-Semitism that's going around in the country or the world right now. And Mark Twain said, if the statistics are right, the Jews constitute but one quarter of one percent of the human race. It suggests a nebulous puff of stardust lost in the blaze of the Milky Way. Properly, the Jew ought to hardly be heard of, but he is heard of. He has always been heard of. He is as prominent on the planet as any other people, and his importance is extravagantly out of proportion to the smallness of his bulk. His contributions to the world's list of great names in literature, science, art, music, finance, medicine, and abstruse learning, and might I also just say, and I certainly don't mean uh, anything negative by this, but comedy. I mean, you know, I think of so many great Jewish comedians from uh, Buddy Hackett to Jerry Seinfeld to Jackie Mason and, uh, you know, just so many, you know. But anyway, they say all these uh, great names are also very out of proportion to the weakness of the population numbers. But he's made a marvelous fight in this world in all ages and has done it with his hands tied behind him. 
He could be vain of himself and be excused of him. The Egyptians, the Babylonian, and the Persians rose, filled the planet with sound and splendor, then faded to dream stuff and passed away. The Greeks and Romans followed and made a vast noise, and they were gone. Other people have sprung up and held their torch high for a time, but it burned out, and they sit in twilight now and have vanished. The Jew saw them all and survived them all, and is now what he always was, exhibiting no decadence, no infirmities of age, no weakening of his pairs of his parts, excuse me, no weakening of his parts, no slowing of his energies, no dulling of his alert but aggressive mind. All things are mortal but the Jews. All other forces pass, but he remains. What's the secret of his immortality? Some high praise from Mike Tw Mark Twain. It's a quote, at 1897, the quote was resurrected in the National Jewish Post and Observer in 1984. And just, you know, looking at this and why the hate? Why the hate? I, I, I don't get it. Especially not in a community like ours, which is, dare we say it, Judeo-Christian. Or any community for that matter. I just, when I saw Mark Twain's birthday was today, uh, that quote came up and I thought it was worth uh, thinking about and just how appropriate it is to today's world and maybe appreciation instead of anti-Semitism. Mark Twain showing us the way, way back in 1897. So happy 188th, Samuel Clements. This one's on you. When we come back, uh, Roger Stone, he's going to join us. I'm looking forward to that. And I will be talking so with a major political player. And you'll be listening, if all goes right, after this. Ag weather from the Mid America Ag Network. I'm Andy Hoosier moving through a end of the week here across South Central Kansas for a Thursday. Uh, really the warmest day of the entire week is we're going to see highs today right around 48 degrees overall. Some partly clouds as clouds start to move in with some potential precipitation coming in tonight, helping out with some of those drought conditions. As according to Brad Rippey, U.S. Department of Agriculture meteorologist, saying that overall the winter wheat crop that's been planted has been decent, although here in the state of Kansas and the Mid America region is some of the worst with the drought conditions with 30% of that crop being poor to very poor here in Kansas. We'll see if this precipitation helps out just a little bit. USDA has just released its final count of winter wheat planting progress. Showing 95% of the winter wheat planted, one point behind the five-year average, three points behind last year's 98%. But USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey says we may be slightly behind on planting, but for emergence, that's a different story. Most areas, even in drought-affected areas, getting enough moisture to promote emergence of the crop. And so 87% of the crop is up as we start this week. That's a little more than average, more than this time a year ago. And finally, here, finally, are the condition ratings for the crop. We are at 48% good to excellent. That's a one-point improvement from last week. 17% very poor to poor, no change. Three percent was in poor to very poor shape. Gary Crawford reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Most of that rain is supposed to focus on the eastern portion of the state, maybe in the lower portion as well, going into Oklahoma overall. That really moving in overnight with a little bit of a chance of snow up in that northeastern corner near the Kansas City area. Temperatures across most of the state dropping down into the upper 20s or lower 30s overall for those temperatures by Friday. Going to be a chilly one with highs only right around the mid-30 degree range. Attention Wichita and surrounding communities. Have you been told you've got too much negative equity in your trade to make a deal? Did you pay over MSRP and are now stuck with a huge loss? You're not alone. At Midwest Kia, we never price over sticker. Come to Midwest Kia's Great Thanksgiving Negative Equity Elimination Event. That's right, come see us at Midwest Kia, and if we can't put a reasonable deal together because of your negative equity, you'll be entered into a chance to win up to $10,000 of Midwest Kia's Negative Equity Elimination Money. That's up to $10,000 more for your trade to help you get back into equity towards the purchase of any vehicle on our lot. At Midwest Kia, we offer a simple, transparent, and fast car buying experience. Come to Midwest Kia and see why people are singing. We want to see you in a Midwest Kia. 
Winner picked on November 30th, 2023. Need not be present to win. Winner receives up to $10,000 applied against negative equity of trade-in on credit purchase of vehicle from Midwest Kia. Negative equity is the difference between trade-in, ACV, and payoff. See dealer for details. No purchase necessary. It's Thursday night, and you're grabbing drinks with some friends. Start it off with a pitcher for the table, which quickly becomes two. There's pool. And there's the photo booth. All right, everybody squeeze in. Say cheese. Followed naturally by an order of wings. And another. Can we get some extra ranch sauce? Then there's the ceremonial nightcap. So what are we doing this weekend? And lastly, it's back to the car, which, if you're buzzed... could be the most expensive night of your life. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving, because buzz driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The Five State Big Talker, KGYN. I'm Marky e. Bilson. It's the Five State Sunrise, and my first guest today has probably had, well, it's not probably, he has had a hand in getting every Republican president since 1972 elected. You can hear him on his own talk show by uh, going to rogerstone.com or on Rumble every day from five, 4 to 5 Central Time or listen to him on Sundays from 3 to 5 Central Time on WABC out of New York. I'm very excited to welcome Roger Stone to uh, the Oklahoma Panhandle. But uh, before I start, Mr. Stone, I wanted to say it's uh, been a sad day, I think, because of the passing of Henry Kissinger. Uh, this is someone, since you worked on the Nixon campaign, I've got to think that your paths somehow crossed. Uh, I don't know how much uh, the Office of Economic Opportunity that you worked uh, for under Richard Nixon and the Secretary of State uh, worked together. But just to begin with, a uh, legendary figure in American politics has passed away. And just your thoughts on Henry Kissinger to begin. Oh, my goodness, we've lost the call. Hold on. We've lost the call. I do apologize for this. Let's see what we can do right here. And I know that this is terrible. Uh, this is not the best radio and all this. As I dial a phone and you listen to me and you say, what kind of operation is this? But uh, let's try this again and we'll go forward. And let's try this once more. Are we there? Yes, indeed. All right, Roger Stone, thank you. I gave you a nice introduction here, and I don't know if you heard it, but uh, from 1972 on, you've basically had a hand in electing every Republican president uh, we've had, which is quite a resume and such, but uh, you also worked in the Nixon White House uh, Office of Economic Opportunity as well as his campaign, uh, and with Henry Kissinger's passing today, I wanted to ask you just your thoughts on Henry Kissinger, uh, who died yesterday at 100. Well, uh, Dr. Henry Kissinger was uh, brilliant, uh, extraordinarily duplicitous. Uh, I think uh, in the Nixon years, where I think this is very important, Nixon was the architect of our, our, of our foreign policy. Henry Kissinger was merely the implementer uh, of that of that uh, policy. The reason Richard Nixon did not destroy the tapes is because he held them as protection against Kissinger later taking credit for Nixon's accomplishments after Nixon's death. Mm -hmm. I know this because Nixon told me this. Uh, and in the Nixon years, ending the war in Vietnam, uh, strategic arms limitation agreement with the Soviets, opening the door to China, and I think this is very important, when China is dirt broke and has no technology whatsoever, Kissinger and Nixon have no way of knowing that 30 years later, the Bushes and the Clintons are going to give the most favored nation trading status, and Bill Clinton is going to sell the Chinese our most top secret missile targeting test, uh, technology to a company called Loral in order to get illegal campaign contributions. 
It is Bush uh, and Clinton who made China a superpower. Kissinger and Nixon recognized China to play them off against the Russians, which saved this country billions of dollars in dispense spend, spending, but also uh, to get a strategic arms limitation. So uh, Henry was, uh, in the Nixon years, I think he did great service to the country. After that uh, is when he kind of, after and after Nixon's death particularly, uh, he moves to the more globalist agenda. So I have, I have mixed views on Henry Kissinger. Uh, the true history there, th- there's a lot to come out. Uh, most of it will get lost today, uh, you know, what will be a shower of praise. But mm-hmm. the, the, the Watergate wiretaps, which were illegal, were done because Kissinger talked Nixon into doing them. Wow. They, they, I know you're very loyal to uh, Richard Nixon and such, and so you're looking at And I think that it's uh, quite a bombshell that you're uh, revealing to us that that's why Nixon kept the tapes. Did you have a personal relationship, though, with uh, Kissinger? I, I knew Kissinger. Uh, I knew him to say hello. He knew who I was. Mm-hmm. I mean, I worked in the political area. He, he, was, uh, he tried to dabble in politics. Uh, he, in 1980... He wanted to meet with candidate uh, Ronald Reagan. He wanted to do so privately uh, while Reagan was in New York, but traveled out to Connecticut uh, for a fundraiser. I purposely went out and leaked the fact that Kissinger was trying to meet with Reagan uh, because Kissinger was playing all sides against the middle. It was Henry Kissinger at the 1980 Republican National Convention who tried to engineer a Reagan Ford ticket. Remember that, uh, yes. And, and Ford's condition was that, that Reagan could run domestic policy, but he, Ford, which really meant Kissinger, would run foreign policy. Uh, and uh, Reagan wisely said, no dice. Yeah, I, I, There's no such, th- no, no such thing as a co-presidency. I remember there was discussion of that and the co-presidency uh, and all that. And yeah, I can certainly imagine... Reagan saying, my goodness, I won the election. Come on here now. I mean, you know, I got to do my job. Uh, I wanted to just uh, to summarize or to go with finally uh, with uh, Henry Kissinger and all. Would you say that he is, in terms of secretaries of state, I was trying to think of one that would be more prominent than he would be in certainly modern American history. I mean, Hillary Clinton comes up, but I think you think of her more as a presidential candidate or the first lady or the senator from New York. Was there a more prominent secretary of state, in your opinion, than Kissinger? Probably not, because, uh, I mean, those accomplishments as secretary of state are pretty extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Uh, the the Russians were going cold on a strategic arms limitation agreement, which is probably among Nixon's greatest accomplishments for peace. So uh, Nixon and Kissinger said, okay, that's fine. By the way, did we mention we're going to see Mao Zedong next week? And he's interested in the deal. Uh, and that's, why, that's how we got the Russians to the table for the SALT talks, ending the war in Vietnam, extraordinarily uh, important accomplishment. It's interesting Nixon's decision to essentially save Israel from total annihilation in the 1973 Yom Kippur War, when mm-hmm. the, the Israelis find themselves under a surprise attack by Egypt and Syria, they're out of weapons, their backs are against the sea. It is almost the end for Israel. Kissinger is opposed to American involvement. Nixon overrules Kissinger airdrops $36 million worth of lethal aid to Israel and literally saves Israel from total and complete annihilation. Uh, It's very hard to point, let's say, to uh, an accomplishment by uh, Hillary Clinton other than perhaps uh, her her insane decision to overthrow uh, Gaddafi in Libya, one of the greatest strategic uh, foreign policy mistakes of all time. Today, uh, at one time, Libya had the highest standard of living uh, in the continent, and today they have uh, human uh, slave trading uh, in the open air. Would you say that's a shades of, uh, uh, say, uh, Bush, George W. Bush, and uh, Hussein and Saddam Hussein taking out, you know, the uh, the Gulf War and such? Cer- certainly, be up there. We now know 
I think this was foreign policy basically run by Vice President Dick Cheney. Our objective mm-hmm. uh, in uh, in Iraq was oil. Sure. They can tell us it was democracy, but it was never democracy. It was about oil and sadly about Halliburton uh, and the interests uh, of uh, of Dick Cheney. We're talking to Roger Stone. Who else with this sort of insight and all? And I did want to, though, change the subject. And initially what I wanted to uh, discuss, of course, the passing of Henry Kissinger. Uh, basically, I found out overnight But I wanted to ask you about uh, the debate tonight. And certainly, I mean, uh, we've got on the Sean Hannity program, and of course you can hear Sean Hannity here every day, two to five. But the situation of, and I said this is sort of like also ran candidates debating each other with Ron DeSantis and Gavin Newsom. And just your thoughts on this. Why are these two people debating right now on Sean Hannity's television program tonight, in your opinion? Well, first of all, I'm glad to hear that you have a Sean Hannity syndicated show. Let me recommend the Roger Stone show on WABC New York. Yes, you might want to pick you might want to pick that up. I I uh, enjoyed on, listening to your interview with Man Cow the uh, oh, a couple of weeks ago. I I really did. I started watching uh, the Vice reports on uh, talk radio hosts and shock hosts that he had recommended. But I very I thought that was very good radio. Please continue though. I, I've learned a lot about radio from Man Cow. But to address your question, you know, uh, this is going to be pure entertainment. As a political junkie, of course, I'll be uh, tuned in. Uh, Sean Hannity's a good friend. Uh, Gavin Newsom is debating to advertise his availability. He knows that right now in the National Democratic Party, there is apoplexy, near hysteria about the deterioration uh, of Joe Biden, about the impact, unpopular impact of Biden's policies, and of course the burgeoning crime scandal, which will prove that Joe himself pocketed 40 million from the Chinese, uh, an issue over which he's likely to be uh, impeached. I'm not sure he'll be removed and convicted, but I think it's highly likely that he will be impeached. Uh, DeSantis, on the other hand, I think is debating because this is a Hail Mary pass in a desperate effort to breathe life into a dying campaign. He can say the polls are wrong as many times as he wants, but he's almost 30 points behind in Iowa, uh, and he is about to get his derriere kicked uh, not only by Donald Trump, but there's a high probability uh, that to former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley uh, is going to slip by him. So if he could theoretically best, Newsom in a debate, which I think is, given DeSantis's past track record on debates, not likely, uh, he could conceivably try to reignite his campaign. He's already tried to reboot his campaign four times unsuccessfully. He's, he, he is uh, behind Ailey in some of the early primary states now. Uh, he's actually behind Chris Christie in New Hampshire. Uh, he is uh, he is really wasted tens of millions of dollars. Uh, this is a last ditch attempt for him to, to kind of grab the spotlight and try to reinvigorate his campaign. Uh, I, I'm going to be watching with great interest. I've been, I said the first part of the show that both Newsom and DeSantis are trying to run what I call Derek Cope campaigns, and that's a NASCAR reference. Let me just sort of explain if you don't get, uh, understand Roger Stone, but in the 1990 Daytona 500, very famous auto race, Dale Earnhardt had that thing won going into the last uh, turn. And there's this unknown driver, Derek Cope, who's running second. He's having the race of his life, but, you know, he's not going to win. And then all of a sudden, Earnhardt blows a tire. And then here suddenly Derek Cope comes. And all of a sudden, he's the Daytona 500 champion. And I kind of think that's what these two candidates are trying to do. They're hoping the legal troubles of Donald Trump get him or, uh, you know, Joe Biden decides at the last moment not to run something like this. Would you what do you think? Uh, Do you think there is any chance the Trump's legal troubles will prevent him from getting the nomination? Uh, I think that that has always been the underlying premise of the DeSantis campaign. I mean, first of all, I should say. Ron DeSantis was an in, undistinguished, unknown congressman with a bad haircut, an <laughs> ill-fitting suit, and a weird personality who no one liked. 
Donald Trump single-handedly made him the governor of Florida. He was he was he was almost 25 points behind his primary opponent, Adam Putnam, who was a state agriculture commissioner. Uh, it was a Trump decision at the advocacy of Congressman Matt Gates and no one else to endorse DeSantis. And then Ron was such an unattractive candidate that Trump had to change his schedule to come to Florida twice in the last three weeks of the campaign to drag Ron across the finish line. Ron won by a hair. Ron DeSantis' candidacy for president, therefore, is the treacherous act of a backstabber and an ingrate. I, as a Trump voter and a Republican, will never vote for Ron DeSantis as long as I live, nor will anyone in my family, nor will any of my friends. I won't vote for Joe Biden or a Democrat. I'll vote Republican everywhere down the line, but I will never vote for Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis, if he's the nominee, will lose to any Democrat, but I'm not too worried about it because he's not going to be the nominee. Donald Trump could be convicted in prison, and he will still beat Ron DeSantis for the Republican nomination. People don't like treachery. They don't like two-faced, uh, you know, uh, uh, double-crossing backstabbers. People here in Florida certain know Ron DeSantis would be managing a McDonald's today, but for Donald Trump. Well, I I came up to Oklahoma from Florida and all, but I would say. Do you think that he's treacherous for running? It would seem to me that this would be uh, the time for him to run. There was a lot of talk about DeSantis, uh, despite your criticism of him. He, you know, had uh, he was a, being talked about as a governor. And it just would seem to me that maybe you run now. And then if you do finish second, well, then the Republican Party, you know, when it comes time to 2028, now you might be the leading candidate. Uh, do you, what, yeah, I'm just asking for your opinion there. Perhaps if he had comported himself differently, but his attacks on Trump have been shrill and increasingly nasty. Look, I, I have been uh, criticized for criticizing his wife. Uh, there's a word attributed to me that I allegedly said about her. You can read it, rare.us today. I never used that word. However, it was Eve who said to Adam, eat this apple, it won't be a problem. She's the one who's ambitious. She pushed him into a race that will end his political career. We have a two-year limitation here in Florida for the governorship. At the end of 2026, there is no office for this guy. But one thing I can tell you, Donald Trump and every Trump member of the Trump family will campaign until their dying days to make sure, ne- sure this guy is never in public office again. It's a personal betrayal. Again, Ron DeSantis has very little talent. He's not very good. He doesn't like people. Wears earbuds. Well, not when he's listening to music, but so he doesn't have to talk to people. Uh, politics is a business for extroverts. Ron is an introvert. Uh, so I, this idea that if he had just waited until 2028, in all honesty, people wouldn't like him any more then than they like him now. Everywhere he goes, he loses votes. People don't like Ron DeSantis when they meet him because he's a cold fish. The last question I wanted to ask you, though, as he is going to debate Gavin Newsom, do you think debates still matter I mean, I think about the presidential debates. I think the one zinger since 1976, my opinion, Benson telling Quayle, you're no Jack Kennedy. That did not win Dukakis the election. And I'm just wondering, you know, debates. Yeah, we're political junkies. We'll watch them. We'll be entertained. But maybe the rest of the country is watching ballgames or sitcoms or what have you. Do debates still matter? I do think they do. I do think they matter because politics, you know, is is entertainment. Uh, And if you're not entertaining the voters, you're boring the voters. Richard Nixon once said to me, the only thing worse in politics than being uh, wrong is being boring. And I think that's right. Uh, And therefore, I do think they can matter. They certainly mattered, for example, in the 19. 80 campaign between Carter and Reagan, because I think voters wanted to see whether Reagan, at his age, was still vital enough to be president. And they learned that he was. I think they were very determinative, for example, uh, in, in, in that campaign. Uh, yes, it would be, I'd be hard pressed to point to a more recent example, but 
Governor DeSantis is not, based on history, a, a strong debater. Go back and look at his two debates with Andrew Gillum, the Democrat mayor of Tallahassee, who later kind of uh, self-destructs in a drug scandal, drug mm-hmm. and sex scandal. He lost those debates. I mean, as a good Republican at the time, I tried to say, Are you sure he won? No, he didn't win. He got beat because Gillum understood state issues and Ron was trying to fake it. He's a, he had been a congressman with no state experience. He knew nothing about state issues. Uh, the most recent debate with Charlie Crist, which should have been a walk in the park because Crist had gone from being a Reagan Republican to switching parties and becoming an Obama Democrat, went from being Mr. Second Amendment to Mr. Let us confiscate your gun, Mr. Uh, I'm for right to life to uh, abortion right up to the time of birth. Should have been an easy debate. The charming Charlie Crist, I, I think, narrowly outpointed Ron. Ron doesn't know which camera to look at. Uh, there's there's no warmth there. P- people have to feel some personal connection to the candidate, uh, and I just uh, I, I don't think he's a strong debater. I would be if, if I were his handlers, I would be concerned tonight. Now, is there great opportunity? There is. If he can decimate Gavin Newsom in the debate, it could be helpful to his presidential campaign. But I think the chances of that happening are extraordinarily slight. He's Roger Stone. If you're a Republican, you have not been the president of the United States without his help since, oh, I think about 1968. And you can go to his website, rogerstone.com, listen to him on WABC on Sunday afternoons, or watch him on Rumble. We have him here on the Five States Sunrise. Thank you for joining us today. Ag News from the Mid-America Ag Network. I'm Andy Hoosier. Well, dairy industry continues to expand across here in the state of Kansas with milk production plants being built in Dodge City and other parts of the state of Kansas as well. But the dairy industry continues to grow with stakes being high when it comes to dairy cattle breeding decisions. And from rising input costs to the lucrative market for beef on dairy calves, females require careful consideration about their future in the herd. As Dan Weigel of Zoitis reminds producers of how genomic data can make an impact for dairies for all different types and sizes. Genomics are absolutely scale-free. Just raising heifers, the cost is high for everybody right now. If you're having to raise extra heifers, that means you're selling fewer of these beef calves. You want to maximize your profitability per cow. He goes on to say when getting either the Clarified or Clarified Plus genomic tests from Zoitis, Wagel recommends focusing on the pre-breeding heifers and says looking back at performance records to analyze conception and pregnancy rates for both the current and previous generations. He says the question is, how many heifers do we want to make each year? Heifers are actually selling for very good money right now. So rather than continue to put the expensive feed into them, we can and cash those heifers in. And uh, we really want to push people to use the information. You know, Are you going to use sex semen? Are you going to make some beef cross calves? Because that really maximizes information. If, you, if we can work with you on those things. He says the data does reveal important insights into whether the female might be best to fit within the herd, but it's not just about the immediate results. I really challenge producers to th- not think about where they're at today, but what if they focus their efforts on their best animals. Would they perform better? And could this all be feasible, this using more sex semen on their better animals? And again, most cases we find the answer is yes. This Holstein cow and heifer are much, much more fertile than they used to be, and we can get this done. They say with the Mid-America region being big on both cattle and on dairy now, it's an important issue to take hold of. You can find more information at dairywellness.com. El Dorado Livestock Auction, two and a half miles east of El Dorado on Highway 54. Proudly serving farmers and ranchers with weekly cattle sales each Thursday at 11 a.m. The order of sale is stock cows and bulls, followed by calves, feeder cattle, then butcher cows and bulls. The goal at El Dorado Livestock Auction is to use an honest, full-value approach that attracts the best buyers and creates a competitive market for our sellers. El Dorado Livestock Auction strives to develop a friendly, personal relationship with each customer and understand their individual business needs. You can see a full list of consignments online at eldoradolivestock.com or pick up the phone and call 316-320-3212 with any questions. El Dorado Livestock Auction, a sale every Thursday at 11 a.m. El Dorado Livestock Auction, two and a half miles east of El Dorado on Highway 54. 
This and the best thing you can do right now up. is not Winter allow is the savages to win a propaganda war, which, which incentivizes them further to engage in more adverse terrorist-type action, especially over here, where our southern border is open and they know it. We're seeing an infiltration of people who have been caught on the terrorist watch list, and apparently Hezbollah and Hamas now know our border's open. Why? Because they can just watch it on cable news. With Chris Broussard and Rob Parker. Weekends, only on your five states big talker, KGYN. Save time with the Smart Hub app from TCEC because life shouldn't have to stop when your bills are due. Get the Smart Hub app today and set up reoccurring automatic payments so you can get back to what's most important. It's smart, simple, and easy. Learn how to save time today at tcec.coop slash pay. Your Tri-County Electric Cooperative. Call them at 580-652-2418 or online at tcec.coop. Some people see a llama. At Heifer International, we see a healthy child getting an education. Just one llama can produce enough wool to make blankets, ponchos, carpet, and rope. The gift of an animal from Heifer can help a family start a small business. This hand up increases access to education, empowerment, and dignity. This is no ordinary gift. Heifer International. Learn more at heifer.org. Weather on KGYM brought to you by the Tri-County Electric Cooperative, proudly serving the Panhandle area since 1945. Find out more information at tcec.coop. Tri-County Electric, a touchstone energy and national rural electric cooperative. Gonna be a cloudy day, high of 47 degrees, winds coming out of the north at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, a low of 21 degrees and the clouds continue, winds coming from the northwest at 5 to 10 miles an hour. For the five state forecast, I'm Marky e. Bilson. At 747, it's currently 30 degrees. The five state big talker, KGYN. Joining us, well, maybe he's not joining me. He has to pick up first. Let's see how this goes. All right, Michael Shannon joining us from Norman, Oklahoma, the city manager of Guyman. And do I have that right? You're in Norman right now? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm traveling home right now. I'm uh, pulled off the side of the road, and uh, and I'm headed back to Guyman. Should be in there around noon today. So you're looking forward to seeing Santa Claus tomorrow? I definitely, definitely. <laughs> well, let me uh, ask you a little bit uh, tougher than, uh, and by the way, if you don't know, Santa Claus is coming to Guyman. He'll be at City Hall arriving helicopter at 545 tomorrow, all right? So everyone should uh, bring the kids out for that, but... I do want to ask exactly. The, yes, I do want to, or you know, bring the your your date out there. It doesn't have to necessarily be children, you know, and all that. All ages can enjoy the presence of Santa Claus. But I wanted to ask you what your uh, travels took you to Norman, Oklahoma, for. Are you trying to bring in uh, money from the University of uh, Oklahoma to Guyman, or what? What uh, what takes you to Norman? Well, uh, you know, we're always looking for mm -hmm. some type of. Uh, of uh, subsidies or handouts or anything like that. But uh, this week uh, I had the opportunity and privilege to speak at the governor's uh, water conference uh, this week on the, on the, uh, the importance of uh, good, clean, fresh drinking water. Well, it seems rather obvious, but of course there's a shortage of water around here. I think it's somewhat depressing to see the dry rivers and such. Uh, what was your conversation about? What was your talk about? Well, that that was mainly it. I mean, uh, I know Marky, you're new, you're new to the area, yes. but uh, we're we're pretty uh, uh, a dry country uh, and has been forever. I mean, even though we have creeks, uh, mainly the creeks are just used. If it rains, it kind of drains off into the creeks. But our major water source is from uh, an aquifer about 300 to 400 uh, feet below the surface. That aquifer is called the Ogallala uh, Water au uh, Aquifer. Say that early in the morning. Yeah, I and, have a uh, tough time with it, too. Please continue. <laughs> but uh, it, it's been there for millions of years, but uh, as, as all the years go by, it's slowly depleting, and it's probably one of the few aquifers in the in the United States that does not recharge. So basically, if you're taking it out, if you're pumping water out, there's no water coming back in. 
And we unfortunately live in part of the world uh, there in the panhandle where it's it's going out uh, uh, at a rapid pace. We've got wells that's lost 100 to 200 feet of water into the uh, in in the casing. So one, like again, like it's, it's it's if you pour water out of a gallon jug, uh, it just yeah, sure. and just set it on the table. That water's gone. There'll yeah. be no water put back in it. So. But anyway, we're 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 pushing conservation uh, efforts, <clears throat> trying to get help from the uh, Department of uh, 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 of Commerce, uh, from all different entities there in Oklahoma that will help us. Uh, we found the water. Uh, we've done extensive um, studies, and uh, we're just trying to update the the people in Oklahoma City. Even though we're running out of water, we are we're trying to solve that problem. And and when we do solve that problem, we will uh, be very good stewards of that water uh, when it uh, is pumped into town. Well, I know you mentioned that you found a uh, aquifer, I think it was four miles away from Guyman. But what else other than, you know, just find, as you say, when whenever that dries up, it's pretty much gone for centuries or, you know, millennia or, or so and all that. So what do you think the long term uh solution is well the long-term solution is that we need to be very conservative with our water usage starting today mm-hmm. um i mean if you look at the it's a long story short uh, uh, would you rather take a shower have uh, f- fresh drinking water or have a green yard mm-hmm. yeah which one would you pick a shower I, I think, uh, green drinking. yard well, I can have AstroTurf. Yeah, I, I don't like to stink. I always was kind of, yeah, you know, well, I'm f- from concrete jungles. My, uh, I've lived in those, so I think I'd rather bathe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> with uh, uh, water. Yeah, water is life. Yeah. Uh, you know, farmers, yeah, farmers need to water. Uh, they, they grow crops that feed the nation. Well, excuse me, not the nation. Our farmers feed the world. Yes. And the, and the world depends on farmers right here in Texas County. So we all need to be stewards of the water and how we use it and how much we use it. So uh, it's going to be very critical. You're you're actually uh, talking about a community that sounds like W.C. Fields' dream community, if you know what he used to say about water, which I cannot repeat on the air, but it was quite humorous. Uh, he, he preferred yeah. another kind of liquid. You may have heard W.C. Fields and such. But no, right now you're preaching to uh, the citizens of Guyman conservation. So that's the uh, big Conser- thing. Yes. That's the conservation. big conservation. Conservation. And I'll be I'll be frank with the city of Guyman and, uh, and the citizens. Uh, we found water. Um, let me go back just a little bit. We are running out of the water in our 17 wells that provide water to uh, mm-hmm. the citizens of Guyman. And uh, when that day comes, I mean, they're all in great shape. The the mechanics part of the wells are in excellent shape. We have a team of men and and women that uh, look after these wells, but the water. Mm-hmm is depleting it is it is lowering at a pace that uh we we've got to go out and find that more water and we found that more water but it's going to cost money Mm -hmm. i can tell you right now utility bills are going to be skyrocketed just to uh you know over or uh, pay the cost of piping water to town so we're trying to educate people now to be conservative uh, you might have to give up the green yards uh, and just use very, very little water. But there again, I'd rather have fresh drinking water than drive around town and see that uh, there's green yards. I bottled water from elsewhere uh, over tap water, things of that nature, I suppose, as well. Anyway, uh, is yeah, it, true. he's the city manager of Guyman, and he's urging, he says, we've got some, we just got to figure out how to get it to us. In terms of the water exactly. here. Now, Michael, Shannon, thanks for joining us and giving us an update and speaking to the people in Norman. Back with a final thought after this. Stay with Westwood One all season long for the most NFL action anywhere. Hi, this is Scott Graham. Join us for Monday nights, Sunday nights, Thursday nights, Thanksgiving, Christmas, the International Series, and the entire postseason. 81 games total. From opening night September 8th all the way through Super Bowl 57 in Arizona, 
If it's the NFL, it's on Westwood One. This is the Big Talker, 1210 AM and 1063 FM, KGYN. Brace yourself for the ultimate holiday deal with Consumer Cellular. Snag an incredible 50% off the Iris Flip when you buy before December 17th, making it only $34.50. The Iris Flip is all the phone and camera you need with a user-friendly design, the perfect flip phone companion. Plus, you'll get nationwide coverage and always free activation. Score 50% off when you use promo code RADIO50. Head over to ConsumerCellular.com and use promo code RADIO50 during checkout to score this deal. Infectious diseases spread by pests like malaria, Zika, and Chagas disease are causing a worldwide health crisis. Fortunately, here at home, we don't face the same level of threat, but we shouldn't let our guard down. Mosquito-borne diseases like West Nile virus and Zika are impacting communities across the U.S., and Lyme disease spread by ticks is on the rise. Whether around the world or just around the block, get the facts you need to protect your family at PestWorld.org. A public service message from the National Pest Management Association. The five-state big talker, KGYN. Sometimes I hate the uh, phone system we have. <laughs> I just got a text. Are we done from Michael Shannon? But it's been quite a show. We had uh, Roger Stone, and he, I mean, you knew that he worked for Nixon when he was uh, talking about uh, the passing of Henry Kissinger. Just to uh, recap here, uh, you know, mentioning, hey, look, I, I think it was Kissinger who kind of said, you know, Watergate, yeah, you ought to go down that path and all this, and that Nixon uh, didn't destroy the tapes because he wanted uh, credit for his work and not necessarily it going to Henry Kissinger. But also, we were saying, you know, this guy is, as he passed away uh, just uh, several hours ago, um, at the age of 100, Henry Kissinger, uh, probably the most prominent Secretary of State, certainly in modern times, uh I mean, you know, who was the Secretary of State for, you know, Rutherford B. Hayes or what? You know, I mean, we can go play that game or something like that. But name one in modern times that was more prominent. I mean, possibly Hillary Clinton, but, you know, because she did run for president. But I don't think that she is known as much. And I know I've said this uh, before on the show. I just want to reiterate I think she's known for being first lady. I think she's known for being a senator. I think she's known for being a presidential candidate. And when the, you know, biography of Hillary Clinton is written, Secretary of State then becomes fourth, in my opinion. And uh, so, you know, we had uh, Rod Roger Stone and also the debate. You know, we'll have the debate on. Uh, well, we won't on KGYN, but uh, Sean Hannity will have it on TV tonight uh, between Gavin Newsom. And Ron DeSantis, very critical of Ron DeSantis. Uh, there's been a falling out between DeSantis and Trump, which we can uh, find out. Of course, uh, as loyal to Nixon as he is to Trump, Roger Stone, let's face it. Uh, next thing that I would suggest is that we then had the mayor, uh, not the mayor, but the city manager of, G of Guyman, Michael Shannon. And, you know, they found water, but he's you know saying... And like I said, I can't say what W.C. Field said about water. It's very funny, but it's also quite vulgar. So just look it up. It has to do with the fish and some activity and all that, if you really want to know what it was. But, uh, yeah, he uh, preferred different kinds of liquids. And, uh, you know, I mean, in an... We're in an area now or an era where it's really recommended for your health to drink 64 ounces of water a day. But, you know, maybe you ought to think about that bottled water and not necessarily the, uh, you know, the tap water, that sort of thing. You know, conserving it in time, it will save money before an aquifer that was found, I believe, four miles away from uh, Guyman can be used for its water. We have 17 wells, he mentioned. They're drying up, but still some left. But, you know, got to be very precious with what's in the well. Those are the messages to put out. You may have heard on America this morning, uh, President Joe Biden talking about, uh, well, in Colorado and his energy policies. Uh, we'll try to get to those tomorrow. I had hoped to do that today. But regardless, Glenn Beck is coming up next. I'm Marky Bilson. See you tomorrow at 7. The Five States Big Talker, K292HG Liberal, KGYN Guyman Liberal, 1210-1063 KGYN, a Steckline Communications Station.
Kansas Mid-America Network News, I'm Trace Tall. Emporia police have arrested a 20-year-old for distributing drugs after finding him with cocaine, marijuana, and LSD. Officers also found drugs at an Emporia State fraternity as part of the investigation. Caden Hunt was arrested Monday on suspicion of distributing and selling controlled substances. An Emporia State spokeswoman confirmed Hunt is currently enrolled at the university. Lawrence police say one man has died after a standoff that began in the afternoon hours yesterday. Officers attempted to serve an out-of-town warrant at an apartment in the 1700 block of Ohio Street. Just before 6 p.m., they heard a single gunshot come from inside the apartment they were serving the warrant. As officers backed away from the apartment, they established a perimeter and called for additional assistance. Nearby apartments were evacuated. Officers entered the apartment at 9.30 p.m. and located a dead man with a gunshot wound. No additional details were immediately available. Kansas Mid-American Network News. Hey, it's Andy Hoosier with The Voice of Reason. You know, your favorite talk radio show where we weed through the fake news of the day, we talk about important issues and bring some sarcasm, fun, witty, and original perspectives to constitutional discussions. Plus, we talk to some of the most unique and entertaining guests. Yeah, that show. Join me weeknights right here on the Five State Big Talker and enjoy the most energetic, fast-paced, intense hour of conservatism on the radio. It's The Voice of Reason. It's weeknights at 8 p.m. and it's right here on your Five State Big Talker, 1210 a.m. and 1063 FM KGYN. I was in the hospital with my son for 18 months. When he got injured, I wasn't prepared, but I knew I had to be strong. When I was told about John's injury, I was in complete shock. I just remember rushing into his room and giving him a big hug and letting him know I was there. These veterans and families are just a few of the heroes we serve at Homes for Our Troops. For thousands of severely injured veterans, everyday life is filled with barriers. It was really the, the little things throughout the house. Counters that you can't roll up to. I had to drag my wheelchair down steps. I want to help, but he is so determined. At Homes for Our Troops, we build specially adapted custom homes with features like wheelchair access, roll-in showers, and automatic door openers that allow them to function independently and focus on their recovery and family. This house is freedom. It's hope. It's a new beginning. This house has given me my family back. To learn more, visit hfotusa.org. I'm Joe Adams. I'm a pharmacist that knows the pain of losing their child to an opiate overdose. If you think it can't happen to your family, think again. To learn more, visit the National Association of Boards of Pharmacy at nabp.pharmacy. Gonna be a cloudy day. High of 47 degrees. Winds coming out of the north at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Tonight, a low of 21 degrees and the clouds continue. Winds coming from the northwest at 5 to 10 miles an hour. For the five-state forecast, I'm Marky Bilson.